Hi everyone, I'm Frank from the City of Games, and today I'm going to be playing The Doran Gardens. Now, please keep in mind that this is a prototype copy of the game, but the rules are complete and everything you're going to see is the final way to play the game, it's just not the final components. So, with that said, let's get started. As you can see, I've already set up the table, and I'm just going to quickly run over the setup. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just put the pile of meeples over here, and we're going to put two decks of cards here. We're going to put the pathway cards and we're going to deal 10 lesson cards. So we do get a whole selection of lesson cards and at the start of the game we're just going to place 10 of them here because the game is played over 10 rounds and the rest of these cards are just going to be moved to one side. We're also going to take the three achievement decks and we're going to take one of each type and we're going to place those down the left hand side as well. So you're always going to get a randomly selected achievement of each of the different types of cards. So the rest of those will also be put to the side. With the two decks set up, we'll draw the first two lesson cards and place them face up above each other like so, and then we'll deal some pathway cards. The number of pathway cards is equal to two plus one for each player. So in this example, I'm doing a two player game and therefore there are four cards. In a three player game, there would be five, and in a four player game, there would be six. You then create the second row underneath following the same rules and you're ready to get started. We are gonna start playing with the top row, in the second round we'll play with the bottom row, in the third round we'll play with the top row, and we jump back and forwards until we've depleted the deck of cards. Each player takes four coloured meeples of their chosen colour, we've chosen the purple player and the black player, and they're dealt a hand of three cards. So that's everything set up. And at the start of the game, the first player is chosen randomly, and then the game will determine the first player based on what you choose. So we're going to start with purple to keep things nice and simple. I'm going to select my hand, and I'm going to look at it. <clears throat> So, as you can see, each card is made up of a 3x3 grid, and we have grass, water, soil, and sand. The sand represents areas that you want to avoid. They never give you any points, and they just get in your way. And effectively, as we play this game, on each turn we're going to be selecting cards and we're going to be playing cards. The first card we place will be placed to the left-hand side of our player area, and every following card will be placed overlapping the last column of the previously played card. Now, there are are a few rules. Firstly, these icons you see at the top, they always have to be pointing upwise and they're specifically told otherwise. The second rule is this card has to overlap the last column, it cannot overlap more than one column and it cannot overlap no columns, so it's always going to have to go here. However, it doesn't have to overlap all three squares, so the card could be placed here, 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 here or here. In essence, you're going to have five choices about where you place that card. The goal of the game is you're exploring through this garden, and as you do so, you're trying to feed animals, you're trying to water flowers, and you're trying to clean ancient relics. And the more of the same type of task you can do in a row, the more efficient it is and the more points you're going to score. So as I place cards, I'm going to want to try and connect the same type of area up. If I get at least three tasks within one connected area, then it's going to score points. And in this instance, you can see I've got one, two, three, four relics, and therefore that is three or more, and this is now going to score. The tablets that you'll see don't classify as tasks, and these are used for other elements of the game. So, my next turn I can either continue to part, um, connect to the blue water area and try and score more points, or perhaps I might try to switch to another area and then try to score points for those. The reason you might do that is to try and achieve the different achievements. So how many points do you get? Well, you get one point for each square in the connected area. So as this has my three tasks, I'm going to score one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points for this region. If I continue to connect to the blue, I'll score more points. Or if I switch to another color, that will be worth eight points at the end of the game. When I play a card, the icon on the top has to match the symbol of the current lesson. So in the first round we're using this top row, and as such I'm going to have to play a card that has that symbol. So that's the basics of the game, and everything else we're going to talk through as we play. So I'm looking at my hand and I'm seeing that I don't actually have a card that has this icon on it. So that's not a problem because at the start of the first round, you're going to just choose one of the cards. So for me, I'm thinking, 
I need something with the symbol, the life symbol, and this card and this card have that symbol, so which of these two cards do I want to choose? I'm looking at my hand and I'm thinking, well I do have some good water paths, but I also do have some good soil. So I'm thinking that this card and this card are actually both good for me, however, the first player on the next round will be the person closest to the left. So in this instance, I think I'm going to take this card. Now I'm going to place my token on it, and this is still kind of part of the setup before the first round begins, so now we don't do anything else when we go to the other player. The other player, the black player, is going to look at their hand, and you can see I've got lots of life symbols. So actually I've already got some options, and I'm thinking that I've got quite a lot of grass cards, so perhaps grass is going to be a good option for me. Looking over at the achievements here, you can see in the soil region, I need to get five different types of flowers within the same connected area. Within the grass area, I need to get three of the same animal, and within the water area, I need to get two different pairs within one connected region. So I'm looking at my hand and thinking, well I've already got two skunks, so I could possibly try and get the third one, however the purple player's already taken the card with the skunk, so I probably just want to try and continue that grass region going. Or I've got um, a fox, I've got a hedgehog, I've got a squirrel, so potentially maybe taking the fox here or this squirrel is going to allow me to start having a different path as well. So actually I think that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to select that card. So. With each player having chosen their first card, we're now going to start the first round. And the purple player is first because they're on the left hand side. So we're going to go back to the purple player and the first thing you do is you return your token and you pick up the card you chose. So now you can play a card. And as we've said, we can only play this card with purple because it's the only one with the correct life symbol. So I'm just going to place this here on the left hand side. As every card overlaps the previously placed card, you're always going to be moving along to the right hand side. So the first card should be placed to the left. Now, I've already now played that card, so my next job is to choose the card I want for the next round. And I have to now choose from the bottom row, and next round I'm going to be playing with the Wisdom symbol. So that means that I could play either of these cards, or I could play these cards. Um, I'm trying to, what do we go for? We're going for soil, so I want to try and connect my soil. Um, my good soil card here has actually um, not got the right symbol, this is only nature, so that's going to be quite restrictive for me, and I'm actually possibly not going to be able to continue this soil, because these ones um, don't have the right symbols. So actually maybe I'm going to switch over to grass, because I've got some grass cards, I've already got a bit of a grass path, this is here that's playable as well, so possibly this one's going to be good for me because it has the skunk symbol and again trying to connect three skunks will give me this achievement so I think that I'm probably now going to switch to grass and I can see that there's another card here with a skunk so that's probably going to be the card I'm actually going to take so I place my meeple there that ends my turn and now we go to the black player. The black player is going to return their token, they're going to pick up their card, they're going to look at their hands, and we need to work out what we want to do. Now, we were looking to go into the skunk path, but I can already see that Purple's also trying, to, or at least has taken the skunk card again, which is going to make this difficult for me. So now I'm thinking possibly I want to switch to another path. Um, so actually maybe this is going to be a good one, because it's got the fox, it's got the squirrel, next round I can potentially continue continue that, so I think that I'm going to go for the fox and squirrel card. I'm going to place this down here, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to try and get one of those as well. I mean, I'm looking and I'm seeing the bunny here, but the bunny is not going to be too helpful for me either. Um, so I'm trying to work out where I want to go. Now, this card isn't great because the left column um, doesn't have grass, which means I'm not going to be able to connect it to my path. Um, but it does come with a tool. So I think I'm going to take this card here. So some SIP cards have these tablets that have icons on them. And actually we have this one here and this one here. So both players have taken the same one. And this means that you found a lost item. And in this instance, you found one of the tools. You can also find pendants and animals. When you place that card, you're going to take one of those um, tall meeples and you're going to put it next to you. At the end of the game, you're going to return them to any locations you found. And actually, you can see in my hand here that I have a tall symbol with a five. And this means that I can return the card, the um, tall meeple here, and that's going to give me the five points. So actually, that works out really well for me. 
that ends our first round. So what happens next? The two cards left move to the side, so they always stay in. So you already know what's going to be in the next round and potentially what's in the following round. So we take out two more cards and add those to the end, and then we take one more lesson card and we place it over the top. So as well as the single symbol um, lessons, there are also advanced lessons. This one means the card you play can be any card, but it has to be played upside down. So that means that the icons will be facing you. And that's going to be next round. So we start round two and it's going to be back to purple. Purple's going to look at their cards, they're going to return their meeple, they're going to pick this up, and we need to work out what we were doing. We were going for the skunks, weren't we? But I have to play blue symbol, um, so I can't play this card, I can't play this card, I can play these two. This one has my skunk symbol on it, so I think that I'm going to place this one here. So again, now we're in the second round, I have to overlap the last column, but at least one of the squares. It doesn't have to be all of them. So that's placed and now I'm starting to connect up this grass. I'm looking at my hand and I can see that I've already got a third skunk and next round I can play any card so I should be able to play this one which will connect that up. So now I'm thinking what's going to continue my path from there onwards. If I'm playing this one upside down this one's going to go here and I'm going to start getting some water. Water means I want to try and aim for two different pairs and I'm playing a tree and I'm playing the orbs so actually um this card is going to be great for me because it actually um, continues both of those. However, because I'm playing this upside down, I know that the last the card I play is going to have to overlap this column. And this card, because it's in the middle, will have to overlap here. However, this card would be able to go underneath. So um, I think that the best option for me is actually to take this one because it's going to allow me to continue more paths and it's going to allow me not to overlap squares because every square you have is a point and if you overlap those squares you're going to lose those points. So we're going back to black and black is picking up their hand and they really want to continue this path so we've kind of ditch the skunk kind of path and we're going for water symbol the only card i've picked up that has the water symbol is this one. Oh my goodness i did not think about that i thought that i'd gone for other cards i thought that this one had the symbol i could play but it actually doesn't so i can only play this card so i've actually totally messed up my planning there oh goodness um Okay, well, this is the only card I can actually play, which means I have to play this card, and honestly, um, it's not going to matter where I play it, because I'm going to play it here, it's going to overlap one of my three animals, I'm not going to be able to score any points from that, so that was absolutely disastrous. Um, I should have taken the bunny, because I could have played the bunny, um, oh, okay, um, so what I'm thinking now is I'm now in damage control, and... That's not great. So what I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to try and switch to this seven. So how the seven works is if you connect the seven to a scoring region, it gives you plus seven points. Now that can be really hard to do, but I feel like that's going to be my comeback now because I've just totally messed this up. So I'm now doing a hard switch to flowers and I need to get this. I need to get five different flowers and connect it to the seven to be in with a chance of this game. I know next round I'm playing upside down, so I'm probably going to be playing this card. I mean, I'm quite geared for flowers because I've got the tools, I've got the return tools. So actually, it's not too bad. The question is, can I get the five different symbols? Um... I'm going to obviously end up with the white flowers and the blue flowers, so it's quite possible that I want to take this one because it's going to continue the soil path for next round, and it's going to give me another type of flower. So I think that's going to be my plan. I've played my cards. I've totally messed everything up. Um, I'm going to go for this card next. Now... One of the challenges you have is you really need to think about when you're moving up and down because now I've placed that seven at the top, the next card I place is going to have to be underneath that to be able to continue that. So I need to think about it. If I was playing this card now, I wouldn't be able to place it because the soil would have to overlap the soil to be a valid play. So that's the end of the second round and I'm going to move these along. I'm going to draw out two more cards and we are going to see what comes up. We're going to reveal the next lesson and the next lesson is going to be life or nature. So 
It's a little bit simpler. It means I'm going to be able to play um, either of those two cards, which means a lot of the cards can be playable. Um, I'm going to take this back. It's the black player to go first this time because the black player was towards the left. And we are now playing our upside down card. So I'm just going to turn my whole hand of cards upside down so the icons are facing me. It makes it much simpler. And I don't think it hugely matters at this point which one I'm going to place. Um, however, this one's probably going to be the better card to place. The reason being is, well, two reasons. One, it's got one symbol, and this one has two symbols. The other one is because of this. Because if this card was placed this way round, and I played that card, it's going to be harder to continue this path without overlapping it. However, this card doesn't have a flower on the ends, so I'm thinking that placing this one upside down here is going to be my best option, because next round it's going to be easy to overlap that clear soil, and we won't have any problems. So... As you can see, this game is all about kind of that forward planning, because I know now that next round, this is the goal I'm going to have. I can have one of these four cards, I'm first player, and then I know in the following round, these two cards would have moved up, and these are going to be choosable cards. So I'm looking at this one thinking, this one could be quite good for me, it's got a symbol that I still need, it's also got a tool which I'm going to be able to return, so I probably want to be able to get that one, which means ideally I want to be first player next round, however, neither of these cards are really that great for me. So I'm trying to work out, do I need to choose a good card this round? Um, I probably don't because I do have two soil extensions here. So these two soil extensions are going to be um, enough to continue. Um, they both have nature, which means they're going to be playable. So let's look at the icons. I've got the white, I've got the pink, I've got the blue. That means I'm going to need to get the green um, and I'm going to need to find one more. So this is the card that I want to be able to continue my path. It's a bit restrictive because again, it's only got a single nature icon on it, but that's what I'm kind of aiming for. And to get that one, I'm probably going to just want to be first player next turn. Um, I don't know 100% though, because I guess this one's okay. Um, I mean, it's not going to be useful for me now, but perhaps later on if I go back into bunny paths, um, it could be good. I mean, this one seems like it's going to be better because it's going to have more of something on it, but it's not really what I want. I want that guaranteed first place, so I think that I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to place my cards down. Boy, that was a complicated turn. Um, the purple player is going to take this. They're going to bring it back to their hand, and now we're looking and we're thinking, um, I've only got one card. So the problem with purple is we're playing it really risky at the moment. Like, I'm single-handedly playing with one icon cards, whilst these triple icons and double icons are much easier to play. Um, like, this card here is... A bad card and a good card because you can always play it. It always continues all three types, but it's not going to actually give you any tasks, so it's not actually going to be scoring stuff. So anyway, this round I'm going upside down and I really want to connect my skunk. I think that's my only option here is to play the skunk card upside down. So I'm going to place this here and that's going to give me my three different animals. So as soon as I do that, I'm immediately going to take my meeple. I'm going to put it over here to show that I've got 10 points. So the first player gets 10 10, the second player 7, the third player 5, and the fourth player wouldn't get any. Um, I can only achieve that once, and now that's done. I am done with green. So I can continue it because you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points here. And if I continue growing the grass, those nine points plus this 10 is 19, I could possibly get more. But perhaps now I really want to be aiming for that double achievement to get the second set of achievements. I've placed this. This has a tool symbol, which means I'm going to take one of the tool items and I'm going to put it here. So this represents a lost tool that I found in the garden. And if I can return it to a location such as this one, then I'm going to be able to get some points. Of course, this is the other player, so I need to find my own. So, what is going to be next? You can see that the next round is going to be life and nature. I've only got one card that's actually playable at the moment, which is this one. Um, and I really want to go into grass, because uh, sorry, water now, because we want to try and get the um, plant, the feather um, icon relic here to get our double pair. Um, so I really want to get something I can play next round for water. Um, this one I can't play because the symbol doesn't match. So actually, I think I'm going to take, having just talked about it, this card here. Here because whilst it isn't going to be great, it will allow me to continue my path. And right now I'm really struggling because my hand is so limited with what cards I'm taking and therefore what's going to be playable. So it's the end of the round. The cards move along. This comes up here. The next card comes out and we're going to reveal the next lesson. So 
Another special lesson. Okay, so this is one of the more complex lessons in the game. So this round we're playing with the um, life and nature. Next round we're playing with this one. And I'll show you how that works. So the black player is going to return their ha card to their hand. And effectively what this lesson means is you're playing two cards in a three by five. So you're going to take one card and it doesn't matter what the icon types are. As soon as you get these purple kind of cards, the icon color doesn't matter. The second card is going to be placed overlapping. So you have to create a three by five and the right card has to overlap the left card and it has to be exact. So there's no kind of up or downs in this instance. You then take those two cards and you play those as if they were one card. So I would then play them that in my next turn. So next turn I'm playing two cards. Okay, so what am I doing? We were, we switched over to soil, didn't we? So we're doing mass soil now and we really need to think about this because we have to get it right. So this round we're playing, um, I don't want these two cards, I mean they just don't have soil. So these are the two cards in our hand and we need to think about what we can do. They're both playable but what's going to allow us to continue next round as well because we cannot afford to, um, lose this pathing and that's going to be really difficult for us because um looking at the cards here they're all at the top there's nothing at the bottom so i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to continue that soil path i mean i can continue this now i could place this card here that is going to continue this tr um, pathway but it's not going to give me anything that next round i can connect to huh um I'm just trying to see. I'm not sure if there is anything good for me. Again, I mean, I can play this one here, which is, again, absolutely fine, but it's not going to allow me to connect stuff up. I mean, I'll be able to connect this one to it, but then when we do our um, double overlapping card, I don't think I'm going to be able to continue that. If I had that card and that card, I probably would, but in the situation I'm in right now, that's not looking good for me. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to play this one. So I'm just going to move these down slightly because I want to make sure that I keep this on the camera for you. So this is the card I'm choosing to play. And by playing this card, I am going to take a tool and I'm going to return the tool to my pile. At the end of the game, I am going to be able to return it. So the good news is, is even though I'm not going to be able to get my achievement, I have got my free flowers. That is going to give me the seven point bonus and I have managed to return something. So I've managed to get five, 12 points off this, which is pretty much matching up with that achievement. I just need to make sure that I can kind of keep on top of this. So, one more rule that's really important at this point to talk about. When you place a card and you're connecting it to your pathway, you cannot go above five in height. So what I mean by that is now I've got one, two, three, four, five. So every card I play from now on has to be below this line and above this line. I could not place this here. I could place it here, but I could not do this or this. Likewise, if I was to come down here, I wouldn't be able to place the card down here because it would be creating six in um, rows in height. So I have to keep within that five high. So that also is gonna limit me moving forward. Now, I really need to work out what I'm gonna take. So I know next turn that the only card I can play from my hand is gonna be this one because of the soil. And I can place this here to connect this soil but there's gonna be nothing else that I'm gonna be able to connect with this. So perhaps now I really need to start thinking about, again, switching over. Maybe I'm gonna go back to grass, because if I get this in here, then I'm gonna be able to get the fox. And is there any more foxes? There are not, but, I can possibly take this card that's going to give me the bunny and it's going to give me the second skunk. So actually now I'm thinking I want to switch over and I'm now going back to grass. I'm going to go for it. I've um, spent a lot of time trying to work out this turn, but I'm going to the grass. Okay, so purple player, we're going to take this up. We're going to bring this back. We're going to add this to our hand. I mean, who knows what we're doing with purple now? I think we were switching over to the um, water, but we've got to go for um, life and nature. So we can only play these cards. Okay, so this was the card we were going to go for. We're going to place this here. Now, arguably, I could place it here, which would cover one of the symbols, but it would then also connect the grass to here, which would give me an extra point. However, it's only one extra point, and I don't think that's really important for us. So I think I'm going to do that there. No. Nope. Once you've found the lost items in the garden, it doesn't matter if you overlap those squares. So I can place that, and I get to keep my tool. So... 
I'm now going for my water. I know that I'm gonna be doing this double card as well next turn, so I'm probably gonna be doing this because that is gonna give me the connection, and actually that works out really well for me. That's gonna give me the Vidoran statue, it's gonna give me, um, or the pillar, sorry, the statue, it's gonna give me the orbs, it's gonna give me the feather, so I'm gonna have two feathers, so I'm trying to get my double pair, so I wanna get either a, a pillar, a statue, or the orbs. Um, there's nothing down there though that's gonna help me with that, so that's not gonna be great for me. I feel like, um, oh goodness, okay, so what is it that I'm gonna take? I'm gonna struggle to be able to connect this up, so I'm possibly gonna take this one just to give me that first player for next round. I feel like that's gonna be the good option for me. So I'm gonna place these down, that's the end of the round, the cards move along, two more cards come out, and as you can see, this is how the game works. So I'm gonna continue playing now. For anyone who's watching, I mean, of course, you know, this has given you a really good overview of how the game works. You can skip to the end and you can see how scoring works or I'm going to continue playing. So next round we're going to be on purple so purple is going to return their card. We're going to bring this back to our hand and we're going to see what we can do. Sorry there was a slight camera issue there I'm just going to go straight back to the game now but there'll be a slight cut but apologies for that. So here we go so we're back with the purple player um, we're trying to work out, we want to connect this water up. Um, I'm thinking that we've got this card we just don't need, so what's the best combination that we're going to be able to have here that's going to allow us to continue these paths? Now, we definitely want to play this card here because we need to connect to that. Um, we could come up here actually, which would give us our five, so possibly um, if we were to do this, this would give us um, the full connection. But what I really want, so I want a card that's gonna have water on the left-hand side next round. So I really don't wanna be kind of um, using these two because that is gonna leave me kind of um, disconnected, but I don't think that I can connect up. I think my only option really is to play this card like this because this is then going to give me the ability to connect this up. It's going to give me, oh, oh, but it's got two statues on it. I didn't think about the cards in my hand. So that's going to give me the two Vidorans and it's going to give me the two feathers, which does complete the achievement. So it doesn't matter if I can't connect it up next round. That is actually, oh, that's worked out so well. Okay, so, oh, great. Oh, I'm so relieved. Um, I thought I'd mess that up again. Cool, so Purple is gonna claim their second achievement. As you can see, Purple is really starting to get ahead now, um, from the achievement perspective at least. So, I think, are we gonna go for Soil? Is Purple actually gonna try and get all three of these, or do we wanna continue to grass? I mean, I've got a lot of Soil in my hand, so it feels like right now it's possibly gonna be the best option, is to continue pushing into that Soil tree. So I think that's what we're gonna do. This card does have Soil on it as well. Um, it's also got an animal which I'm gonna be able to pick up, which I might be able to return later. So I feel like this is gonna be the best option for me, um, because maybe I can continue the water for a little bit, and transition into soil, which is gonna give me more points. So, because I played two cards this round, I'm now gonna to get to draw an extra card at random, which I add to my hand. Um, I'll have a quick look, and that's a water card, so that's pretty useful, um, but I'm gonna place that down here. So that just fills your hand back up, so you always have those three cards. We're now gonna come back over to the black player, and the black player really has some making up to do. We're gonna add this card to our hand, and I need to work out what was our plan. Um, I think we were switching over to grass, weren't we? So we're playing any two cards. We need to continue this grass path. So, I mean, I've got my double bunny and I've got my double um, skunk. Um, I've only got a single fox, but there is a fox there. So there's double fox. So I could take this card next turn, but I can't play that card. So I could take this card next turn, which is playable, which would give me another fox. So if I get a fox out, that is gonna give me the ability to, um, to score, but, oh my goodness, because how do I get the fox out? Because I really want to get this animal, and if I overlap the animal, then that's going to destroy having the fox. Um, if I place these two cards like this, they're not going to connect. If I place these like this, I'm going to overlap the fox. Um, if I do this, then I'm overlapping the um, the animal, and if I do this, then I'm overlapping the fox, so there's no good way for me to do this that I can see. I'm sure you're screaming at the camera telling me that I'm a total, total muppet. Um, oh my goodness. So, 
I feel like what's going to be best, I can't overlap the fox, so I'm going to have to overlap the animal, which is disappointing because that is going to cost me five points, and I'm only trying to gain seven points from the achievement. So is it actually worth that? But, oh, or do we overlap the fox and hope that we find another fox? Oh, let's do it. Let's overlap the fox, right? Okay, we've got this. We're going to take the animal um, because that's five points as is. And we're going to overlap the fox. Oh my goodness, what am I doing here? Um, okay, so this is my t plan. This is the plan. Um, I'm overlapping the fox. I now have two skunks. So I've switched back to skunks. We've already tried skunks once. The other player's done skunks. I am in so much trouble if I'm doing this, but I am taking my animal, which is going to be worth five points to me. And now I'm thinking about what is it that I'm actually trying to achieve in this game. Um, I went for animals, then I went for plants, now I'm back to animals. I really need to get a skunk, there is no skunk, but what I probably want to do is try and make sure that I continue this path, and I can continue the path with this one, okay, because this is playable, this will be playable here, it's within my five height, and that's going to give me two bunnies and two skunks, and I feel that potentially I want to take this one, because um, it just gives me an option to continue my grass, um, return another animal, and it gives me another fox. So it does give me some options. So that's gonna have to be my plan. Um, similarly, now I've placed two cards, I've chosen my card, I'm gonna get another card in my hand, and that's a beautiful card for me. That is so good, that gives me the potential to get the skunk, and to give me the bunny. I just really need to hope that I can play it, because it is a life symbol, it's a life symbol. So, end of the round, we're gonna move the two cards over, we're gonna reveal the next two pathway cards, we're gonna reveal the the next lesson and black is hoping that this has the life symbol on it it does have the life symbol on it so black is absolutely sorted we're going to return this back we're going to take this and now finally after all of this woes all of these problems i'm going to place this down here the third life symbol card in a row has paid off it gives me my three skunks and i'm going to claim the seven points wow so that actually worked out well and again you can overlap the tablet once you found the item so we're not doing too badly we've got 10 points from returned items we've got seven points from the bonus our pathing's not looking too bad here i mean over here it was awful we ignored all that part of the game but now we need to think about what we're doing because we've got this round we're playing we've also got the um we've got the next round and we've got just a few more rounds left so we've not got too much left here um but no what have i done no because we're not playing life this turn we're playing nature or water this term that's life for next turn oh no um Oh, okay, so we're playing the water or the nature this turn, which means I haven't got it. So I'm going to return this back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay, so I can't play those yet. I'm playing the bunnies, but next turn I'm going to be able to play that. So, oh, my goodness. Okay, relax. I got so excited for a minute. I thought we had done that, but we haven't. So next turn I'm going to play my skunk card. So what is my goal? What am I going to try and aim for here? Um... Oh, are we just going to continue with the grass next turn? We are, but then what are we going to do? Are we going to try and transition once again and fight for something? I mean, maybe the flowers. Maybe this is the time we go back to flowers and we push the battle for the fight for the plants for the last scoring point. So I think that... Oh, I'm going to take this one because it's going to continue the grass. It's going to give me some flowers to get started. It's got multiple icons and it's just going to be first player for next turn. So I think that's going to be it for black. We're coming over to purple. Purple's going to return this to their hand. Oh my goodness. This is all over the place now. So what are we going to do? We want to transition to soil as well. Um, We've got lots of options. I think that this is going to be the best option for us because it's going to allow us to continue the water path. It's going to give us an animal, which hopefully we might be able to return for some points at the end of the game. It's going to get us to the soil path. Um, so what are we going to take for next round? We want to connect to the bottom here. Um, so the only card I've got which is going to be playable is this one, but I can't play that because it hasn't got the right symbol. So I'm going to end up overlapping this icon here. I cannot play this here because it puts me to six high. So I need something that has soil in the middle, um, but there isn't anything. So I think that I'm not going to, well, yeah, 
I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'm probably going to have to continue water for another round. Um, that's not great news for me. I mean, I want to kind of push myself into the soil, so I need to start adding soil into my hand, but that's not worked out so well. So Black is in with a fighting chance here. We're gonna take the next two cards. We're gonna reveal them. We're gonna reveal the next lesson, and it's gonna be nature only, which is gonna be great for those soil goers. Um, so the Black player is gonna return this. They're gonna add this to their hand, and now we're gonna get our skunk. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm so glad we actually managed to do that. Is that the one we want to do though because maybe maybe I want to place this one in because why would I do that yeah it gives me the three bunnies it does give me the achievement and it transitions me to soil so it has a couple of less squares on it but it starts a transition um but am I going to be able to continue that next turn um oh wow I've got this card here that's playable next turn but that has to go at the top and that's not going to connect the soil so I probably don't want that so now I'm thinking do I want to try and transition over to water I've only got a couple of turns left what's going to be easier to get I mean looking at my hand um there's a really good water card here so possibly that's going to be a good option for me um Oh my goodness, so many choices. I don't know what I want to do. I think that, I mean, getting this one continues the grass and gets me into water. It feels like it's going to be a good option. So I think that maybe I'm going to take this one here. This is going to get me a, um, that's not even going to complete the achievement. Of course I'm not. I'm going to take this one. I have to go for this one here. This one, I keep changing the cards. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, if I place this one here, then that's going to allow me to, yeah, I think that's the option for us, right? That is the option. That's going to get us the achievement. It gives us three skunks and three bunnies. That doesn't do any more than give us the seven points, but it is going to set our path for next turn. Next turn, we're playing nature only, which means I've got these two options. Again, I could continue to transition to plants, or I could start looking into this water transition. This one's going to get me well on my way because it is going to continue grass, give me a tool, and it's going to give me some water, which I can continue next turn, but I can't play that that card or this card so this is going to probably be the card that I play um, if I go into water so I want to continue the orbs or the plant um, neither of those do that what's going to be the best card here um oh I feel like it's going to have to be this one because it's going to give me the first player marker. It's not going to give me the tool, but then maybe I'll be able to return a pendant. So that feels like that's going to be my option. Purple player's coming back. I can't remember what we're doing with purple. I am totally losing it. We're trying to get our plants. We're playing life or, um, we're playing life or wisdom over there. So the only cards we can play are these two cards. Um, I think we discovered we can't continue our plant stuff here, which means that we're actually going to be looking to maybe just continue our water, but maybe, maybe I just start pushing into the soil. Maybe that's the option, because next turn we've got multiple soil options here. So I could place this one here, and this is going to give me... Um, it's within my restriction, it's still within the five. Um, it's giving me somewhere to return my animal, so that is gonna score me five points, and I can potentially continue that next turn. So, I've got some good options here. I know next turn I can play these. So I've got the white, I've got the green, I've got the pink here. So I probably wanna try and get something else. Um, well, I definitely wanna try and get something else, obviously. Um, so I'm probably gonna take this one because it's gonna give me potentially some options later on, depending on what comes up. That's gonna be the end of my turn. These are gonna move along. The next two cards are coming out and it is looking good. It is looking good for black. So we're going to place this one up here. We're going to return this to my hand. And now, okay, we need to work this out. We want to transition to water. The only way to transition to water right now is to play this card. If I play this card, next turn, we are doing life or we are doing nature. So this is not looking good at all for black. What am I on about? Maybe it was looking good for purple. Um, none of these cards are good. I mean, this is a direct line up. This is a direct line up. They are not going to be helpful for me right now. Um, this one's going to be good if we get to the water stage. This one's going to be good if we get to the grass stage. But... This does give me the points if I manage to return it for another five points. So that's what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking that, oh my goodness, but next turn, what am I going to play? I'm only going to have these options. I've got nothing good in my hands for nature or, well, this is nature. So I think 
I think what I'm going to do is this turn, I'm going to have to play this one. This is going to be my best option. It sticks within the five. Um, maybe, maybe we continue with the soil because next turn I can place this up here and that's going to give me two plants. Um, and then this one's going to give me the third plant. So I think that I'm just going to push for first player. I think that I'm going to continue pushing for first um, first player. That's going to be the end of my turn. We're coming over to purple. We're getting towards the end of the game here. Um, where are we going? We are going to, we're doing nature, so we can play any of these cards. We really wanted to continue our plants, so our options are, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, we probably want to get this one out because we can then get the tool. It's giving it, no, we don't want that one. That one is awful. We want this one. So that's going to give us somewhere to return the tool that we've already got. And it's going to continue um, pathways so we can go in any direction next turn with our soil. Um, but there is nothing good up here for soil. There really isn't. I mean, I'm looking and thinking I've got two places to return pendants. So potentially just taking this one to give me that option um, could be a good place to go. These two are going to slide across. The next two cards are going to come out. And this next round is going to be the last round. So we've got this round and next round. Black is going to go first. And black is now in a difficult situation. They've got this card and next card. Are they going to be able to get two pairs? It does not look like it. Are they going to be able to get two sets of flowers? Um, sorry, five different flowers. It is not looking promising at all. I think we could do this and we could do that, but that's only going to give us four. It's not going to give us the fifth. So now the question is, what's the most optimal way of getting points? I've got one tool to return here. Um, I've got no more tool return places. So actually, have I got anything else I can score points with? I could potentially get a pendant and return that, but there's no more tiles for that. So I'm thinking my option now is just to connect the best combination of paths possible. So this round, we're looking at life and nature. So these are the cards I've got that are playable. What's going to connect up and give me the most points? I mean, this is not going to connect to anything. So we can scrap that off straight away. Potentially this card this card is going to give us free um soil which we can connect up to this one but it's not going to actually be scoring so maybe we want to try and connect to the grass but i can't connect to the grass because that takes me under the five ah okay um i think then we have to go for the soil we the only option we've really got is to continue the soil um it's not worked out for us at the end. I think that next round we're going to be able to play this one, which will connect that soil up a little bit, but that has not worked out too well for us. Black is in all sorts of trouble. Um, so now the question is, what can I do to try and screw over the other player? Um, well, I think I'm just going to take this because the tool is something they could possibly use. I'm not sure. It depends what they play, but it is going to restrict them. The purple player is going to take this back. They're going to add this card into their hand. So they are desperately trying to see if they can connect this soil up um what are their options what are their chances it is not looking good this is the only one they can play that's even going to continue the soil um but that last achievement is not looking easy for them so is this the right card to play i mean it's going to give us four more points um but then next turn, what are we going to play? I mean, we could do these two, which is going to give us five more points if we just get those two cards into play, but we can't play them both. Ah, okay, we're doing this. We're taking the tool. Um, we're going to take our last card. What is there that's going to be any good? I mean, at least this has plants on the left-hand side, so that might be something that's scorable. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be the option. So that's the end of that round. This round doesn't really matter for switching over cards. These two can just be removed. This can be turned over just to remind Mind you that this is the last turn and now all the players can just take their cards back to their hand and play off this final card we're looking at life we're looking at wisdom and I mean I could play any of the cards in my hand I mean look at that look at the options um, but what's gonna give me the most points here I think that we don't have anywhere else to return tools to so those are all done for um, we don't have any more animals to return, so those are done for. So we're really looking at just the number of squares we can connect. And it looks like this would connect one, two, three, four squares. This would connect five squares. However, we can't connect that because this would push us to the six. So I think that 
Oh my god, that would push me to the six as well. Don't tell me that I've actually taken cards that I cannot play. No, 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 no. Um, oh my god, okay. Okay, no, we need to score this one up here. This will give us the soil. Okay, there was a plan. I, I guess that was the plan. So that's my card. So my hand now gets discarded. There's no more cards to select. The purple player is going to reveal their last card as well. Again, we can't play the two wiz... Um, we can play them, sorry. We, can't, we can play all our cards. Great. So what is the best option here? We are not going to be able to connect any more flowers, I don't think. We definitely can't get the... Um, other flowers that we need. We've got one, two, three. We don't have the red. Um, so what can we score up? What can we connect? We don't have anything that's going to give us bonus points because we, oh, we do. We could play the pendant. The pendant would give us five more points. If we put the pendant in, um, we could place it in. I mean, it means that these aren't going to score though. And is it worth that for five points? Um, is there anything else we could play in that would actually connect up to more points? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think that if we put this down here, that's not going to be valid anyway. So I think the pendant is actually going to be our best option. We can also connect it here that's going to give us one more flower point. So that's going to be the end of my turn. That's going to be the last card. And now we simply go on to scoring. My money is on the purple player here. I think that they've probably got it, but it's going to be fairly close. So... How do we do scoring? Simply you just go through and you add up all of the squares that contain at least three features. So if you do it colour by colour, it can be a lot easier. Um, so on the graphs, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points there. This doesn't score. These don't score. So ten points for grass. We're then going to go through the soil and these don't score here. None of these score. These don't score. So this one scores. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 points. So 13 from the soil there on 23 points and then we're going to do blue these ones don't score this one scores so 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 7 38 39 40 41 and this one doesn't score so 41 points from the pathing we can also return our lost items so 41 that's going to put us to 46 can we return the animal that's going to put us to 51 points um there's nowhere else to return stuff. So that's 51 points over here, 61, 71 points of purple. So 71 points, which is a really good score. Black is in all sorts of trouble. Okay. So black had a total nightmare of a play over here. So let's go through the grass. So these don't score. These don't score. This big grass area does score. Sorry, this one does, yeah, so we're doing grass. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 points there for that grass. But that's all there is for grass. What about water? 18, we've got nothing here. None of the water scores. This is looking awful. So soil, we're on 18. We've got 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, plus 7. So that puts us on to 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 points. So so we're only five points behind from the pathing, but 36 points doesn't look like it's going to be enough. We can return this, it's going to put us on to 41. We can return this, that's going to put us on to 46. We can look over here and we can see 53 points and that is not going to be enough points. 71 for purple, 53 points down here for black and that is Vidoran Gardens. That was a playthrough of me demonstrating a good way of playing and a bad way of playing. It's a game where you're planning your turn. You're planning your next turn. You're planning some of the following turn. You can see the restrictions for now. You can see the restrictions for next turn. You're trying to work for those achievements. You can see what the other players are doing and what they're working towards. So you can try and just, um, you block them. You can push for them. Do you get those items? Where's the best points? Is it the five points from returning the item? Is it the seven points from connecting that tablet to your path or is it the achievements what do you want to work for so that is Vidoran Gardens it's a 20 to 40 minute game two to four players if you've got any questions please feel free to ask them below and until next time keep on adventuring